Well, the men's triple jump, we haven't seen anything of them yet, but this is an event which we expect to be dominated by the Cubans. They've got two very impressive jumpers in this uh, final here with uh, Lazaro Martinez, who is the defending champion. He actually won the title when he was just 16. And perhaps his greatest threat coming from his fellow countryman, the reigning world youth champion, Christian, so, turns out. There is uh, Napoles, the world youth champion. We take forward the leading half dozen. There is the defending champion, by the way. We take forward the leading half dozen just for one will need to be revised significantly if he is to get into the medals. Here's somebody with a bit of a chance, Melvin Raffin of France. Five time best. So here is uh, Martinez leading with 16 metres 59. The defending champion, he's been beyond 17 metres before. And that looks pretty good. But he likes it. He was right on the board. He's got a white flag. So Martinez. 1695 is best so far, or 59, I should say. But this looks to have gone beyond 17. Indeed, it has. 17 metres and six. Well, he won it with 1713 two years ago when he was just 16. And that little jig there on the runway rather suggests that he thinks he's done enough this time well martin the two best jumps of the day then to lazaro martinez with that 16.59 open up and then 17 meters broached which is uh, getting into very serious territory for senior athletes never mind about youngsters of course the world record for a under 20 athlete by uh, volker may of east germany set back in 1985 17 meters 50 is looked at with a very severe squint by statisticians and historians and indeed many people aware of what was going on back in the 80s there it is confirmation of that mark that world under 20 lead for lazaro martinez and if so we're into the final round of this men's triple jump remember just the leading half dozen vaulters jordan scott's already gone he was the first of those in the final round he settles in sixth place with the best so far of 16-01 that was a lifetime best and from sung jin suk well he looks like settling with 16 meters 11 in fifth place as we were expecting at the start of the competition it is being dominated by the two cubans although the level of competition not what we might have anticipated it's never really taken off if you know what i mean just one man beyond 17, the defending champion, Lazaro Martinez, who unless something extraordinary happens in the next minute or two, will be taking the title here, a successful defense. You don't get too many of those at the World Junior Championships. Successful defenses of the title. Any athlete who uh, comes here twice will do on their first visit as a youth. And that's what uh, Lazaro Martinez did when he won the title two years ago in Eugene. Won it when he was 16. Jumped 17-13, rather better than he's jumped so far tonight, 17.06. But at the moment, it's well enough to retain the title. We've got Europeans in places three and four. Here's the first of them. Philip Kronsteiner. Already a lifetime best from him. Uh, Austrian national junior record of 16 metres 25 coming in the third round. He's got progressively further as he's gone, so his confidence will be sky high. Needs to find another dozen centimetres or so, though. That's another good effort from the Austrian. He's been very consistent this evening. I suspect that might not be uh, an improvement on his third round effort, just falling back into the sand, which would have cost him a little bit. Such a demanding event, both technically and uh, physically, this triple jump. And Kronsteiner with his final attempt. Just a little bit of the magic has dissipated. But he will still leave as a fourth placer. He's hoping a brain that it's enough to maybe get him past Melvin Raffin of France. 
There appears to be something of a wait for uh, the mark here. We have yet to receive it. He too. <laughs> They're keep, keeping him on tenter hooks, aren't they? Torture almost. Well, 16 10, I think, as we anticipated. Back to where he started almost. Still, it's a fourth place finish for the Austrian and a national record. No cause to grumble. Well, the next event at the track is the men's uh, women's 100 metres final. That's just a few minutes away. 362, though, Melvin Raffin of France. Third place it is at the moment. I don't think there's an improvement there, and no, and his reaction speaks volumes, doesn't it? Didn't like it. Maybe the timing out a little bit there. Not a good final phase either. Lands a bit flat in the sand, and he knows it. So looking for 16.50, his best 16.37 came in the first round, but I don't think he's done it with that one. His last chance to improve from the bronze medal position has gone. But it is a bronze for the Frenchman. Some would say it's a good thing to be angry, to be disappointed with not winning. The bronze medal is not what he came for, clearly. Well, the uh, Cuban national coach is where he has been throughout this final, and he was here for the long jump final yesterday, leaning over the railings by the pit. Christian Napoles, the reigning world youth champion. Can he come up with a big one here? Oh, it's a mighty effort. That's a terrific effort from Napoles. He's got the silver in the bag and rather suspects it's not enough to peg back Martinez, but could there just be a little bit of a twist here? Big, powerful man. Could well be his best of the night. Let's see how close it's got. Napoles, 16 metres 62, it is his best, but he doesn't challenge the champion Martinez. Well, what a response though, Martin. The competitive juices are certainly flowing. And I'm loving these camera angles, by the way. All credit to the production. That reverse camera angle is very, very rarely seen, and yet it gives you such an interesting perspective. This uh, is an unnecessary jump. Of course, it's a, an exhibition jump in effect for the champion now as he is Lazaro Martinez. 17.06. That uh, 16.62, by the way, of Napoles does officially give him the second best jump of the day. It was otherwise the two best jumps to this man because he opened with 16.59. Can he cap the 17.06? No. <laughs> so often that's the case, isn't it? Yeah, you just It's hard to focus, isn't it, when you know you've done the job. Yes, and what was rather nice there was the... Uh... The American athletics team, they're joining in with the celebrations for Martinez, the United States and Cuba. Not uh, two countries with the greatest recent diplomatic relationship. Goes to show that on some occasions, sport truly can transcend other parts of life. But it has improved, hasn't it, in recent months? Now American tourists and cute cruise ships are going into Havana, so... Um well, not right into certainly Havana, it the harbour, I guess. But. Certainly rather better than it was in about 1960 or 62. Oh, it's a heck of a lot better than it was six months ago. <laughs> yeah, and I suspect the Cuban economy is enjoying the benefits as we speak. Well, it's been a day of doubles, hasn't it? Double for Cuba in the triple jump. Double for the USA in the 110-metre hurdles for men and the uh, 800 metres for ladies as well. And it does go to show what talent spotting and good coaching can do because Cuba, year in, year out, they've produced good long jumpers and triple jumpers, don't they? And they're doing it again here. They have done in the uh, men's long jump at these championships and now gold and silver here in the, uh, the triple. 
Just the women's 100 to come. So Lazara Martinez, successful defense of his crown, 17-06, although a little bit shorter than he jumped two years ago in Eugene, Oregon, but uh, I can't imagine he's terribly concerned about that. Gold and silver for the Cubans, a bronze for France.